Hello, hello, how are you? It's Michelle here, founder of United Art Space, and I'm going to be going live quite a lot um, over the next few days and a couple of weeks actually, whilst we're running the workshops. So we're running workshops for artists, they start next Tuesday. They are absolutely free, and they are, I've got to say, I've written them and I'm really, really proud of them. They take artists through the steps, break, break everything down, um and i ran them last year and got amazing feedback so i'm so excited to work on them again because i've just been in the group i've set up a group on facebook for everyone taking part in the workshop um so if you haven't joined that group yet um go and do so because i've just literally been going through and i'm so excited so something really hey tina tina's in the group tina don't you think there's something so magical about when artists come together and um there's almost like this energy because at this moment, everyone's fired up. So everyone is raring to go, everyone's excited. So what that, that's doing is it's having a, an impact on everyone else. So everyone is getting really excited for the workshops and I've been looking through the art and every single person I can see potential in. And what's really, um, what really surprises me, and this is why I do what I do, is that I look through and it's natural when people are coming together in an art group, they start to see other artists. And what happens? You start comparing yourself and you think, I'm not as good as them. And oh no, maybe I should be working with colours like that. Or, oh, um, and, and it's natural. And I've just been in the group and, and just, I'm not going to rattle on about it, but um, it's natural. It's 100% it's natural to feel like that. And I was talking in the group about when you, um, in your comfort zone, you, you lose those feelings. And every time you push through to a new level, you start to feel the fear and you think that you're not good enough. Um, and so one thing that I want to just say is that honor where you're at, but also know that you're, you're not, oh, I don't know how to phrase this. <laughs> but what, what I've seen in the group is people who are absolutely good enough and they're saying, they're telling themselves that they feel like an imposter and they are good enough. I can see it um and so you know sometimes we've got to get out of our own way and and not be so critical which is so hard it is so hard and it's not easy and it's a natural human instinct because the fear is there to protect you so when you um it, it's like that negative voice the chatter telling you oh you're not good enough you're not good enough it's just because you, you're pushing yourself into a space where you're just feeling a bit out of your comfort zone so know this that I don't think any artist feels like they're good enough. And sometimes when you do feel like that, it's because like I say, you're in your comfort zone. And when you push yourself again, you'll feel like you're not good enough. And that's just the cycle of life. But one thing I do know is that when you start to, when you go through the workshops, which start next week, if you're not in the group yet, you need to get over it. It's so amazing. <laughs> um, but when you start to go through the workshops and we start to, to dig into our, you know, the reasons why we make art and um, and this is something else I've noticed from the people in the group. Everyone's got their own style, their own, it's not just about style, it's like um, their own DNA <laughs> coming through in their work. I can spot it already. There's people who do portraits, but every single one of those people has a distinct like way they apply their materials and I can see that difference and that's what makes people unique and that's amazing and there's some people who are doing completely different kind of artworks so we've got lots of portrait artists and you know it's easy for some people to see that and you see a place for that and there's some people doing very different kind of works and that can throw fear because you think oh my gosh I'm different to everyone else now I'm feeling inadequate and so that's normal as well. But what I want you to know is that when you really start to just be the artist that you, you're born to be, express that world. And the, the guy that I was looking at who was saying that, he's got really unique art. And I can see that he's really tapped into the way he feels and sees. And, and that's, um, that's great. And, you know, that's a head start. Um, so this feeling of inadequacy around others because maybe you're not doing the same thing as other people or you don't feel like you're at a level yet where they, these other people that you're comparing yourself to are, just know that you are you, 
You are where you're at right now, and that's okay. And when you keep going and just keep being true to who you are, and when I share this framework with you, when you keep going through the framework, you get closer and closer and closer all the time. By the very nature of practicing and practicing, you'll get better and better and better. Um, and so when you start really tapping into um, the reasons that you make art as well, which a lot of people join um, these workshops and they don't know why, and this is where the workshops will help you. I remember, I remember Marita, I don't know if Marita's on because she's in Australia, so it might be a weird time for her. But she joined, she's amazing, a ceramicist, and she makes cups and saucers and hand paints them, they're stunning. And I remember her joining and she had no idea why she makes them and just had no, you know, I just make them. This is what I make. And since joining the hub, she's gone through a lot of um, self-exploration and looked deeper into why. And we've got lots of lots of questions inside the hub, so she's answered all those. And what she's brought out, out now is this beautiful story and her work has a narrative and sometimes we don't see it. And actually... I, and the story rings rings really loudly with me because she creates these beautiful cups and what she wants is to create cups that don't sit in a cupboard. You know, when you buy something really exquisite, you just want to treasure it and you put it in a cupboard and you just look at it. And she's advocating that. I want you to buy this lovely thing and I want you to actually use it. And so there's this beautiful message there, like don't wait, wait, um, just use it today. And behind that also is this feeling of nostalgia. And um, I remember my granddad, who's not here anymore, he was a real tea belly. He was Irish and he lived on tea. And as soon as I walked through the door, he would be like, I can't do his accent, I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> but he would be like, do you want a cup of tea? And I'm not a tea belly. And I used to say, no, it's okay, I'll have a glass of water. <laughs> he used to be horrified water um and every, no matter how long time went on he would always ask me for a cup of tea and if i was there for a couple of hours he would have had six cups of tea but the point of the story is he had his his mug he had his same mug and and that nostalgia is what uh, marita's getting through in her work is that we have possessions don't we we have things that we like and my granddad had his mug and when i see like now i, I feel emotional about it because that mug, you know, and especially when someone's not here anymore, it just evokes so many memories and those special times. Anyway, and can you, so now can you see, you know, from Marie to digging in her, to her why when she joined, she just felt like there was just no meaning, they're just cups and I just painted them. But actually there is a lot of meaning um, behind. And so, um, and, this just opens up so many possibilities and ways to connect with people and when you do the workshops um keep an open mind and one thing i will say as well is when you start to dig into the reasons that you make and you start to get clearer you understand yourself as an artist more and your work on a what it starts to open opportunities and what happens then is quite often we think that you, know, you might look at your work and think it's not good enough and you're looking at that work thinking this is something that i need to sell to make a living but actually when you start to dig into the meaning and the reason it's there sometimes things aren't so clear cut and maybe you're not going to make a living from selling these individual pieces this is the exciting thing that happens when you start to dig in more into why this work exists and the deeper meaning. And by the way, it doesn't have to be really, really deep and you don't have to be changing lives. And um, you know, it, it can be just really simple and quite often it is really simple. But what happens then is you start to go on a path and start to meet people that understand this work that you make. There are ways to make money other than just selling what it, the physical thing that you have. Um, for example, Sharon now is auctioning her work. She didn't even know that was a possibility. Her work has been auctioned. But there's, there's now ways that you can exhibit. I know artists that are being paid to paint, so they'll bring them into an exhibition and pay them to paint. 
there are even artists who are supplementing their income by hosting paint parties and there's a lady that I know, Christine, she's going to come in and do a talk soon. She's actually making $10,000 a month teaching artists step by step how to paint. <laughs> and she's selling her art as well. And this has all come from just, you know, this is what I mean. Some people get in their own way because they just think, I can't, I can't see how I'm going to sell this. I can't see how I'm going to sell this. But when you kind of drop drop that fear and stop worrying about how you're going to sell that and start instead carving out, finding your people, being open to the idea of opportunities, um, things start to happen. Um, there's this other guy, Nicholas Wilton, some of you might know. He's an amazing artist. He's an abstract artist. He nearly made a million this year. Um, I met him just a few weeks ago in Canada. He nearly made hit a million from teaching artists um, what he knows about making and selling his own artwork. It's insane. Um, now these things, they don't happen overnight. It, it grows and grows and grows and grows. And so what I'm trying to say is keep your mind open. And sometimes when you feel like you're looking at your work and you think it's not good enough, or I don't understand how I'm going to sell this, stop that thinking. Turn it around to the opportunities that could be out there. The opportunities that you don't even know yet you don't know you know you can't always plan because like Sharon she, her work has been auctioned and she never even knew that that was you know you, you have in your head sometimes that an auction is for the people that have died <laughs> um, and so the, these these opportunities arise from when you start to just get really clear and finding your people which is what I'm going to teach you in the workshops so keeping, keeping an open mind um, and knowing that you don't have to be proud and do this all by yourself and feel like to be an artist, you've got to sell 100% of your artwork um, to be classed as an artist and that's how you make your living. You don't, you drop all that pride. Um, you do need help and you don't do this alone. And it's okay to make income from other things. In fact, it's a good idea, as long as it's making you happy, of course. Um, and so don't worry about whether you think you're not good enough. It's not your decision. <laughs> I think it's okay to recognize that, okay, I, I feel like I want to improve this. I know I can improve this. That's okay. But saying I'm not good enough, I'm not good enough, these words are making you feel inadequate and you know the very nature of saying i'm not good enough is squashing you it's it's putting out to the universe i'm not good enough if you're saying that to yourself it's going to come out in the way you feel and in your confidence so looking for opportunities this is what you want to be doing i feel like my work could be so much better than this and that's what i'm going to aim to do um, so I want you to squash these feelings of, um, oh, I feel like an imposter. It's okay to recognize that you feel like that, but okay, I feel like this now, but I know that I can grow and other people have done this and that feeling is never going to go away. So I'm just going to keep going. As long as you're not letting it stop you, you need to keep going. Everyone feels like an imposter when they're growing. That's, it's natural. And so it's to recognize that and to just keep going. There's my morning rant. Um, hello, how are, you, how are you, my lovely? Um, yes, Tina's in the group and it's an inspiration. It really is. Oh my gosh. I literally was like getting excited looking at all the artwork and reading about the reasons why people are here. And some people have given up jobs and now they've got, you know, found art again after years. And oh my gosh, this is the reason I set up this group. <laughs> because for me, my passion. I absolutely, I can't describe how how much I love just helping other artists now because it's literally what I live and breathe. I, I It's what I think about all day long. Um, I get so much joy, and this is why I set this up, because I see people getting in their own way. I see people that have given up a job and they've gone back to art and they just don't know, they don't know what to do with it. Or there's some people that just live in that fear. They were told they would never make a living and that, I've had people tell me that their art teachers told them they were crap and that they shouldn't make um, art anymore. 
I mean, how horrific is that? And that, hearing all these stories, fuels me even more to, to carry on doing what I'm doing and to reach people because um, even if, you know, there's some people that I work with and yes, they want to make a living, but there's some steps before that and it's working on the confidence and working on what art they want to make. And actually, when you take away sometimes the pressure of selling, when you're in those early stages and it's about how can I get this out there and what is the purpose and making change with your art. I, I get a lot of people who make art for therapy and sometimes when you take away the need to sell and you start to make an impact with that art, you will find that and to, it leads you towards a living. When you get really excited about what you do and you start to see the art and you think it can make a difference in this way and it could impact these people, um, that leads to the sales. So anyway, these, these are the things that we're going to be talking about in the workshop. Uh, Mikey, hello, you're loving my hair. Thank you. It's, it's kind of um, faded. Lottie, hello. I've been looking at your work in the group. It looks amazing. Hello, Gemma. Are you at uni? Um, Stacey, through the United Arts Base, I have learned not to compare myself with others and pursue my own artistic voice. She sure has, and she's on fire. I can now admire other people's artistic voice without feeling jealous or intimidated or inadequate. Yeah, and you've just hit, reminded me of something, Stacey, because, um, oh, it's so easy. I, I, to do this, to compare, and I do it all the time with what I'm doing. I think, oh my gosh, they, that, you know, the, the, the Christy who I talked about, she's making 10,000 a month. <laughs> um, and it's like, oh gosh, but you know what? I admire her and I just think it's amazing. And it can happen to all of us. And, um, but also just knowing that there is a place for everyone. I really truly believe that. And when you start just, just focus on your people, and you ignore everyone else because you can't you can't you can't appeal to the whole world and expect everyone to love what you do you just can't and so when you really start to just focus down on your people carving out your place in the world um and everyone else is insignificant and so and even what other people are doing is none of your business anymore it's okay to be inspired by them but as soon as you start to feel that jealousy and that rage just switch them off stop following them um until you sort yourself out <laughs> um so yes so that's it anyway i'm going to head now so i'm going to put the link at the top if you want to take part in the workshops if you know anyone that would like to join us um please let them know because it's going to be a long time before i do this one again i uh i've got uh, something else up my sleeve which is completely different um in january so so this is going to be the last time i run this for a while so if you know anybody, um, please just tag them, um, send them my way. I'd love to help them. Um, it's amazing for people who don't believe in themselves. If there's people that just like making art, but they don't know what to do with it, it doesn't matter what stage they're at. Um, and that's what these workshops are for, basically. Or people that even, I've had people who have been professional artists for 20 years, who are just feeling stuck. It's been great for them as well. So um, yes. Love to you all and I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye.